<clears throat> Matthew 26, verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> The blood symbolizes his life poured out. And that was the price he paid for the forgiveness of our sins. Sin was not an easy thing to be forgiven. And when I see Christians take sin so lightly, you can see that they don't have a clue about the actual price that Jesus paid. And Hebrews chapter 10 warns us about that in Hebrews 10 verse 29 how much more severe than the old covenant punishment will be the punishment for someone who has regarded in the middle of that verse 29 the blood of the covenant as something common or unclean the word unclean is a word which means common cheap a legitimate paraphrase of this would be someone who treats the blood of Christ like tap water. Tap water is cheap. That's why we're not afraid to get our hands dirty. Because to wash it off with soap and water is cheap. What does it cost you to wash your hands? And then you get it dirty five minutes later, fine, no problem. Wash your hands. A couple of hours later, your hands are dirty again with work. Wash your hands. Water is cheap. And the meaning here is, when we sin and go to the blood of Christ, just like we wash our hands, and then a little later we sin again and say, oh, confess and go to the Christ for cleansing with his blood. We are treating the blood of Christ as something cheap. Treating the blood of Christ like tap water. It's a good question to ask yourself. Do you treat the blood of Christ like tap water? Let me show you another verse related to the blood of Christ and relation to sin. Turn with me to Hebrews in chapter 12. <clears throat> verse 4, you have not yet resisted in your striving against sin, you have not resisted to the point of shedding blood. Think of that verse. How far have you resisted in your striving against sin? In Jesus' case, he's talking about looking at Jesus and running the race. In Jesus' case, he resisted sin to the point of shedding blood completely. In other words, dying completely till every drop of blood uh, went out from his life. So the picture I get here is you know, if I take a very pointed scissors or something sharp and press it against my skin, there's a certain elasticity in my skin that no blood will come. I can poke myself with a, something sharp and it just goes in. But after a while it begins to pain. Then I know it will penetrate and if it penetrates, blood will come then I pull back. In other words, I allow the resistance up to the point of blood coming, then I pull back. You have not yet resisted sin unto blood. In other words, you do resist sin to a point like this pointed thing pressing against my palm. But when it comes to the point of blood, that when it comes to the point you have to die to yourself, that you say no. I'm going to assert myself. That's what happens in a lot of homes between husband and wife. There's a conflict and one will restrain themselves, restrain themselves, restrain themselves. But when it comes to the point where they have to totally die, they say, no, I'm not going to die. I'm going to assert myself. You have not yet resisted to the point of blood in your striving against sin. Jesus resisted to the point of blood. In other words, his attitude was to resist unto blood means to die. I would rather die 
than sin. That is the meaning of that verse. If I break bread, and that has not made any difference in my life, in relation to my attitude to sin, I have not understood the breaking of bread at all. So, we admire Christ being crucified for us, but the broken bread, when Jesus broke it and he passed it around, it says they broke and ate it themselves. So if I'm not willing to share in that brokenness of Christ, when the bread comes to me, I should admire it. Oh, wonderful. Lord, you died on the cross. So good. I really weep when I think of how you were broken for me. Don't touch the bread, pass it on. Admiring, I'm not partaking. I have no interest in partaking. That's where I say many Christians have been liars and liars for years. They partake. I want to be broken like Jesus. Really? Is there a change in their life the next one week after they broke bread? Not at all. <laughs> they should admire the bread. Oh Lord, it's wonderful how you died. Don't touch it. That's what I mean. I'm talking about myself. For years it was like that with me till God opened my blind eyes and it made a difference. The same way with the cup. Lord, you poured out your life so that you might do the will of the Father. I want that same spirit. I'm partaking with you in it. It's a covenant between me and the Lord. Mm -hmm.